Hi, how are you? It's me, Alex, your sassy dispatch girl. And today we're going to be talking about how to get set up with brokers. Well, set ups can be done two ways. First, you just fill out PDF, broker carrier agreement. You send them your set up packet and you exchange this paperwork. They're going to put you in the system as a new carrier and it can be done. Second way, they're going to send you the link where you're going to click and you're going to put your duty number, OMC number. Usually all your information is going to be already there. You just need to verify. You just need to confirm your address, your insurance. And this is a faster way. So let's see what I had to deal with today. Well, I was booking the load for tomorrow from Aspers, Pennsylvania to North Lake, Illinois. And it's a PAM transport. I never worked with them before. So after we agree on the price, uh, broker asked me if we are set up. He did check my MC and we were not set up. So in this case, he's going to send me his setup. And let's see. Let's open it up. And we're going to see that he is using PDF format. So we have carrier setup information instructions. We are right here. So let's open up and I'm using Adobe DC because it's going to be easier for me. Let me make it a little bit smaller and maybe I will move my picture all here on the side right here. Well, uh, they're going to tell you what they need from you. They want to make sure that this is signed completely and send it back. Also, they need to make sure that you're going to sign a payment authorization form if you do not have factoring. Uh, they want to make sure you have copy of operating authority. If you are a hazmat carrier, you need to send them a permit or certificate. They want to make sure that you complete a W-9 tax form. And they want to make sure you make them certificate holder. So I'm going to be working on it. I will not be sharing information private, but I will uh, go to some pages where you can actually see what needs to be done. So this is a page number one. They are giving their credentials. They telling them where they located their bank information. So this is their carrier agreement uh, setup. Uh, and all of those agreements are going to be different. Some going to have 17 pages, some going to have 24 pages, some going to have three pages, but information they're going to be asking you kind of going to be the same. Let's just overview and then I'm going to fill it out and just uh, show you what else needs to be done. So general information. When are you going to be entering this agreement? Of course, as of today, between whom? PAM Transport and you, whatever the name of your company, Safe Transportation Inc., uh, uh, Silkway Road Inc., uh, any, whatever name, whatever your carrier is, if it's your company or if you are a dispatcher, this is a carrier you are working for. Simple, simple. Then you have all these terms, you have all these agreements. Well, and here where it comes. Are you really going to be reading it? Well, you're not an attorney. Secondary, uh, it would take a few days for attorney to review, right? So we're here in disadvantage. That's why trucking, I don't think it's a fair business because somewhere here, probably in a small, small, tiny letters, are going to be things saying that it's always going to be our fault. It's always carries for and nothing you can do about it. Because why? I need that load, right? I don't have time to really read and I don't really have time to send it to attorney. And even if I do not agree with anything, what's going to happen? They just not going to give me the load. So this page number four, five, you're just going to be scrolling down, right? You're scrolling down, you're scrolling down. And here you go. You're just going to put your carrier uh, name. You're going to uh, put the signature of the officer or owner. If you are dispatcher, you have no legal rights to sign carrier broker agreement. Remember that. 
as a dispatcher guys you can sign a rate confirmation because you were the one who agreed to terms you were the one who were listening to transit to commodities but legally you cannot sign agreement and a lot of times they're gonna say president of the company has to sign authorized manager has to sign so in this case you're gonna make sure you have you have a signature of your owner or he has to sign this initial agreement with pam transport inc for the future relationship so simple simple here they're gonna ask you to fill out carrier profile a profile with again your name dot mc how many trucks do you have if you have any other certification of course your tax id how many trailers you have what is the physical address for the company what is the mailing address what is the main phone number what is the main e address dispatch guys if you're working for bigger company please separate it dispatchers should have their own email accounting should have their own email make it nice and easy so i suggest if you have safe transportation you should just uh, create safe transportation dispatch at uh, net.com you buy it it's ten dollars or even less it's not that expensive make it look professional stop putting those nonsense name for example alex.78 underscore ukraine best dispatcher at gmail.com guys this is not professional they're gonna make mistake when you try to give it them over the phone and then you're gonna be sitting here waiting for that setup right where is my setup why well because your email does not make sense it is too long so usually my suggestion you want to look professional it should be the same as your company nowadays too many options are there it's not expensive so create safe transportation accounts in safe transportation dispatch safe transportation maintenance maybe and maybe safe transportation bols you should separate your things otherwise things are gonna get lost you're not gonna be updating your brokers your shippers you're not gonna be uh working um uh, efficiently with even your factory because maybe they send you a response somewhere you have few dispatchers opening the same uh, email things get lost so organize being organized in this business is number one priority multitasking being organized making sure you do it fast enough so separate so you're gonna put it here you're gonna put the signature uh payment authorization form again let's pay attention here standard payment method yes standard because if you have a factory then money gonna go directly to your pack factory you cannot choose quick pay you cannot choose quick pay direct deposit factor i am requesting payment to send to factory and company or sometimes it's gonna say standard payment 28 days 30 days because you have notice of assignment go back and uh, watch my video about factoring why do we need factoring this is not a purpose uh, of this video you should be already knowing what factoring is and why we charge it but as a dispatcher you need to make sure you do not make mistake because if you have a factoring but you're gonna choose also quick pay or something while well, they will charge two percent in this case still send the money to factoring factoring is going to charge you two and a half percent so in the end of the day you're going to be paying five and a half percent make sure you know this make sure your dispatchers know that difference so you want to put a signature of the owner manager dated again direct deposit just for people who do not have factoring so then you will need attach avoid, avoid the check you need to make sure you know the information about your routing number about your uh, checking account you need to make sure it's authorized by your management usually i don't see that many carriers who can survive without factoring and if they do this and try to wait for their money this is a not a smart business decision if you guys are looking for better factoring needs please contact me i work with rts i represent them for a long time and i think we can give you way better deals than anybody else 
And I'm not just saying that just because I'm an agent, I went through different factoring until I found the one I like. So you can call me, you can email me, and we can uh, help you to find a better solution. Um, if you are not a hazmat carrier, you're just gonna skip because you don't have that hazmat permit, right? So just gonna skip and that's it. Before you send paperwork again, they're reminding you what needs to be sent. Sign broker carrier contract, carrier profile page filled out, payment authorization if it's needed, and you need to make sure that copy of authority uh, sent, copy of W9 sent, insurance certificate, and everything should be emailed here. But pay attention, this is their main number. You working with specialty broker. In this case, this is Aaron, right? I know, so I will be replying to Aaron, right? And if I'm going to work on his setup package, don't you think that I should be sending him already my setup, my carrier setup, and from previous uh, video, you know, what do we have in our carrier setup? Well, we have cover page where all information is needed. Well, we're just gonna ignore that. And we have uh, cover page, we have proof of authority, we have filled out W9, we have uh, our carrier profile, we have our references, so it's easier. And before I'm gonna be start working on his setup, I will send him our setup and someone in his office will be working, right? So I'm gonna attach it and I'm gonna say, um, thanks working on your setup. Give me five minutes, okay? Thanks, so he knows he knows I'm working on it, but also someone is gonna be creating our profile. And as I said, we have our setup, right? So we have our cover page, we have our proof of authority, we have our certificate, we have our factoring and everything else. Correct? Correct. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna be working on his, um, on his setup packet. I'm gonna take a little break because I'm gonna be filling out with the personal information, the carrier who I'm working for, and then I will be back. And the second part, we're gonna see how is it done by link. Is it different, is it harder? And that's how it works. Probably gonna take me five minutes. So total setup should not take more than 10, 15 minutes. I'll be back. So part two, how to get set up. So let's keep going. Let's see how I do it, what I recommend. It's not hard, it is easy. You can do it, I can do it. You can do it via link, you can do it via PDF. You can do it in a truck if you stop. You can do it in your house. You can do it on vacation. You can do it outside of the country. You can do it in USA. You can do it anywhere. You can do it while you're flying if you have connections for internet. So let's continue. I did fill out that packet and I sent it back to my new broker, right? I sent it back, I said, thank you. So all of this was filled out with the signatures, with the information and all of this is done. So what happened now? Now you guys are set up with a PAM transportation and probably 10, five, 10 minutes and you're going to be receiving rate confirmation. So what happens now? Now you are set up with PAM transportation to do business for any future loads. The only few times you're gonna be changing something or maybe adding if you get a new insurance and you will need to provide them a new updated certificate of insurance or maybe add them as a certificate holder, right? We have to add them as a certificate holder. In this case, PAM Transportation contacted my insurance 
um, agency and they made those changes. Most of the times you guys are gonna have login for your insurance provider and you're gonna request certificate holder. So in this case, what did you have to put? You have to make sure you put the information. Let's see one more time. They are telling you that insurance certificate was spam as certificate holder. So this information you guys are gonna put in the request. Exactly this address, exactly this town, because a lot of brokers, they have a different facility, they have agents, so they want to make sure that this information is displayed on certificate holder. So right now we covered how to get set up via PDF, right? A lot of times you can go and get set up via link. So they're gonna send you link, you're gonna click, you're gonna verify information, you're gonna answer all the questions, and sometimes they will ask you to attach files. They're gonna ask you, please attach your NOA, notice of assignment from factoring. Please attach your master certificate, right? Certificate of insurance. Please attach your carrier setup packet. That's why it's so important to make sure you have full setup packet with those five pages. Again, cover page, proof of authority, uh, certificate of insurance, W9, your references, and whatever other certification you have, and also have them separately, right? So if you just need to attach certificate of insurance, you can do that. You should have it in front of you. If you need to fill out and you don't wanna go in between the screens, you always should have set up packet in front of you because we cannot memorize all the numbers. Yes, MC, you're gonna know because you're gonna repeat that day after day, few times a day, few, few hundred times a day, but like tax ID, like phone numbers, emails, it's easy when you have it in front of you. Make sure your personal setup packet is nice, nicely done, it's organized because this is the face of your company. So do you think somebody wants to work with somebody who have W9 uh, filled out and scanned halfway? I mean, no, no guys. This is number one, one and one successful dispatching. Represent your company the way you wanna be treated. So if you cannot even make a nice setup packet, well, maybe you should take some uh, business classes because uh, First impression, it's always matters, right? When you go and you meet somebody and you see beautiful blonde girl, well, why do you like her? Maybe because her is her is done. She's nice looking, she's clean, she's fresh, right? And the same with a setup packet. This is your company. It has to present you, so it has to be organized, right? And I'm a sassy dispatch girl, so that's why I'm telling you that, because nobody else is gonna tell you that. Broker is not gonna tell you, well, your uh, setup package looks like garbage, but I can tell you, that's what it is. I've seen it so many times, and when I'm taking over company and I ask them to send me their setup package, I'm telling them, somehow you have to redo it, I have to redo it, put a nice picture, choose a nice colors, make sure it looks nice, right? Yes, so let's see few other packages, uh, for example, like from TQL, because those are bigger. You guys work with TQL because it's gonna be the only company, one of few who will work with you from the day one. TQL, Convoy, Siege, Robinson. So let's just scroll down and see the TQL empty packet. I'm not gonna be sitting here filling out with you, but I will make few comments while we are gonna be watching this. So I will open the uh, TQL empty packet. And again, with TQL, you can just go on their, on their website and you can do it right there. Or you can ask them to send you, uh, you can ask them to send you set up packet via PDF. So now you guys see TQL set up packet. It includes 16 pages. Uh, it's their cover page. They're telling you how great TQL is. 
they are telling you that they have the bond for 200,000. Usually brokers have it 100,000, but they are big. They are number one uh, brokerage in USA. Why would they have 200,000? Well, because they do carry loads which cost more than 100,000 per load. So they wanna make sure that they cover their back, right? Because if your insurance fails to pay for the cargo claims, it will go against their bond. So they're just the smart business people because they know that things happen in truck and accidents happen, snowfalls happen, and maybe drivers forgetting to put the temperature or secure that machinery. So they just trying to protect. Plus, as I said, they can afford it. So they're gonna tell you how great they are, their references, I guess they're putting like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight companies who are giving them high fives and yes, you're gonna love and hate TQL because they go, will give you a good price when they really need your truck, but they also will take advantage of you when the market goes down. Plus, you cannot judge company just um, by one load. And they are big. They have, I think, approximately 3,000 brokers, so everybody's different. So when people say, oh, I don't like TQL, they just give the cheap freight, well, that's that not statement which I'm gonna go with. It's a different good brokers in TQL as well. They do have paying loads. Yes, they want you to be loyal and they want to make sure you don't cancel them last minute. And if you treat somebody right, believe me, they will reach out to you. I have a bunch of brokers from TQL who I work in all the time, who know that my drivers, whoever I dispatch, we always gonna be on time and that things happen, I will reach out giving updates. So just um, understand, you cannot judge a company by one drive, brokerage by one load, okay? We, ho we have good apples and bad apples everywhere. In brokerage, in trucking, in accounting, in factoring, as a whole, like in any business. And trucking is a, is, is a business where a lot of people need to be educated. So this cover page, you're gonna just scroll down and here you come to carrier uh, form. Why do they want this? First, they're gonna tell you all these things they want from you to be able to set up you as a carrier. They're telling you, make sure you sign broker carrier agreement included in this packet. Okay, we have it. Make sure you have copy of certificate insurance, cargo and liability. Yes, we have it, we have master certificate. Make sure you fill out W9 included in this packet. Yes, we have it. We already have that set up packet, right? We have all that included. So we're gonna attach and send it back to this broker so someone can start putting you in a system if you're doing wire PDF. When you're gonna be doing wire link, you can do it as well. And I'm gonna show you. I just don't have no one who I have to set up. Today, yesterday I set up my new carrier and uh, he's already good to go with TQL. He's signing up for his their board as well because it's free. Remember, most of those brokers nowadays, they have a free load board. And if you want to succeed, you should take advantage of it. So let's continue. Well, we want, they wanna make sure you have a proof of your uh, authority. They want to make sure that this form is completed with your information. If you do have a factory, they want to make sure you put their address and phone. If not, they want you to have void the check for your business account, where the money is going to go to. If you have a brokerage authority, they want you included as well. If you are hazmat carrier, they want to make sure you include your hazmat permit and they want you to fax it to their main uh, carrier service uh, department. Again, if you are not really looking for the load right now, then you're gonna do it. If you just wanna get set up because you planning to work with TQL, you got your authority, you got your insurance, your MC is active, then go ahead and send it there. But I would suggest just go on the link and do it right away. If not, you'd better send this back to the broker who sent this to you. Uh, Self-explanatory, carrier name, dispatchers, physical address. If you have a different uh, address you want to receive your paperwork, then you're gonna include it. If it's the same, just put the same. Local phone, free phone, fax, email address. If you guys have website, 
you can include it or not. Does your company use a dispatch service? Yes or no? So let's talk about it. Dispatch service. If I am, if I am dispatcher working for the carrier, it's not a dispatch service because I'm your employee. I dispatch your five, six, ten trucks. But if you hire me, dispatch training center as a dispatch service, and I don't dispatch just your trucks and everybody else, then yes, it's dispatch service. So in this case, you're gonna say yes if you use my service and you're gonna put dispatch training center and my phone number if you have it. Otherwise, if you just a dispatcher for this carrier, that means that you just employee. So no, it's not a dispatch service. Well, is your company a smart way partner? If yes, you guys gonna know because you're gonna ask your owner, do you have certification? And if yes, you're gonna have that certification available and you should add it to your setup packet, your company setup packet. Then if you guys qualify for any of this, uh, if you have certification for being a uh, woman owned small business, service disabled veteran owned business, economically disadvantaged, minority owned business or any other uh, certification, if yes, you will need to provide a copy of the certification. If not, then you're not gonna choose any of this. You're gonna just skip it. Uh, claims contract. Who is gonna be dealing with any claims? So usually it will be the owner of the company or accounting. It should not be dispatch, dispatcher or dispatch service, right? Because it's a little bit different issue. Claims should be uh, dealt with uh, different departments, but if it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, carrier, you are driver, you are dispatcher, you are an accountant, then it's gonna be you. So for the smaller carriers, a lot of times dispatcher, accounting, after hours, it's always me, 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 and me. So when I started a long time ago, I had all these crowds. I was accountant, I was dispatcher, I was a maintenance and service manager. I was doing so many things. The only thing I did not do, did not drive the truck. But every other crown, I had it on my hat and I had to learn. Anyway, uh, if you had um, SCAC code, then you're gonna include it here. Does your company broker out extra freight? Well, guys, let's listen to this question. Does your company broker out extra freight? Well, probably not, right? Because it would be double brokerage. I don't think the TQL would be really happy with you brokering out extra freight. So logical answer is no. Number of the trucks. Well, let's make it clear here. Guys, they're gonna check your certificate of insurance. They're gonna request the certificate holder so they will know how many trucks you have, right? So if you are putting number six here, but you honestly just have one truck and you just want to look better and sound better and don't lie, please don't lie. If you have six trucks, put six trucks. For people who are playing those games, driving 30 trucks, but on insurance just put in six, at least keep up with your lies. Then just put just six, right? Because if you have 30, but you put on insurance six, well, you, you lying to everybody, but at least lie logically, right? And actually stop killing this business because people who will try to do honest business cannot compete with you and you put in this industry and risk so stop doing that. That's why when I'm listening that somebody asks me, oh, can you help me out? Can you get me coverage? And when I ask them the question, well, how many trucks? Well, I just wanna put five, but I will be running 2025. Well, my answer is no. I have values, I've been in this business. I know how much it costs to run this business honestly. So you know what? Find somebody else who knowingly gonna know that you lie into the system, knowingly known that it is illegal, still gonna help you, go ahead and um, and uh, find help from them, okay? Because even the factoring, we, we know how many trucks you have, we're not that stupid, it's logic, you know, we are in logistics. But if you're willing to do that road, then you never will sign up for my classes or my webinars. I don't teach how to scam the system, I teach you how to become good responsible carrier, carrier who can keep his MC 
for years and years and years with good service, with a good dispatch, with good safety. So don't even call me and ask me, oh, Alex, uh, do you know anybody who sells MC? No, I don't believe in this. So I will not give you my advice. My advice is educate yourself, get better. So let's continue. I don't want to get personal. Well, you have to tell them which, uh, what kind of trailers you have. So if you have five drive-ins and five, if you have five flatbeds and five, and maybe you have two reefers. So total would be what? 12 trucks. In the end of the day, logic. Keep going. They want to ask you your hours, right? So if you work from eight to five, you can put it. They can ask you facts. If you don't have a fax, because not everybody have a fax nowadays, then you're going to skip and you're going to put the contact now, a name, right? So if you want to separate for dispatch, for accounting, then you do so. Well, payment terms. So this page, a lot of people get confused. Alex, if I have factoring, what should I choose? Well, if we have factoring, right? The factoring is going to give us money within 24 hours, 48 hours, right? So that means that we are asking TQL to pay us no fees payment. And in this case, no fees payment is this 28 day pay, right? So that means that it's going to take an average 20 days for TQL to send money to our factoring. If you choose seven day quick pay and you do have factoring, what's going to happen? You're going to click here and TQL will send money to your factoring instead of 28 days. They're going to send it in seven days, but they will deduct 3% and then factoring will deduct whatever you have 2%, 2.5%, 3%, 1.5%. So no, if you have factoring, you're always going to choose standard pay. And if you don't have a factoring, that it's up to you, one, you, you what you want to choose. You can have one day quick pay and they will charge you 5% plus uh, 25 cents per con check fee. They can have seven day quick pay, which they're going to charge 3% service fee, or you can just wait for 28 days and they will send you check, or you can ask them direct deposit after 28 days. You will need to fill out the form and of course send them what? Why the check? Easy, self-explanatory, like in any business. You're going to sign, you're going to put a signature again. Signature of whom? Of owner of the company. Person who legally can sign this kind of contracts, even if you are filling out. So, or you have the signature safe and the permission to use it, or you will fill this out and ask your owner of the company or manager sign. Dispatcher cannot sign this. Here, you have to ask your company what is their policy. Do they let drivers to get fuel advance com checks? Yes or no? Are dispatchers are permitted to receive fuel advance comp checks? Yes or no? Anyone in the company is permitted to receive fuel advance comp checks. Honestly, my personal opinion is we all have fuel cards. Why should we let drivers, dispatchers, or anybody else get fuel advance, right? I don't think so. Plus, you know what? Nowadays, it's hard to trust the... Uh, to trust anyone. And you know what? If the load cost from California go to East Coast, let's say $8,000, driver, maybe you had a disagreement. He can call and if you put here authorization that he can receive fuel advance comp check, he can call and get up to $2,000 advance and just leave your truck in the middle of nowhere don't even text you, call you, got his 2000, went and started working for somebody else. So you know what? I don't think uh, good about this feature. So I don't think so. We have fuel cards and you know what? Drivers should contact management and ask them permission. Any company can send them comp check from their account, from comp data, from fleet one, whatever they are using. So my suggestion, no. I That's my personal, you know, you ask me here, uh, Sassy, what do you advise? This is my advice. No, I don't think so. Again, direct deposit agreement. Well, what are we going to choose here? In case if we have factoring right here again, we're going to choose 28 day no fees. We're not going to be filling this out, all this information, because we're going to have notice of assignment 
from our factory to show them where the money has to be sent, which account, what the others. But still, you choose in 28 days, no additional fees, carrier name, sign, signature, title, MC, DOT, tax ID, date. Yes, you do need to fill this out. Wow, we on the page six out of 16. Again, there's a substitute form for W9. So they want to make sure the name again, they want to make sure which state you were incorporated, what is your tax ID. Usually we just filled out this corporation because a lot of times we are corporation, LLC, I don't really see that many people who are in truck and business and do it as, as individual or maybe partnerships. But whatever you have, you're gonna put it here. And again, sign, address, title, date, very easy. You just need to make sure you start doing it fast. And I use Adobe DC because it will memorize previous information. So you keep, keep scrolling again, like with the PAM transportation, do we have time to even read it? Can we really verify with a lawyer? No, we are here in disadvantage. So hopefully, hopefully we're not going to get to the point when we have to go fight in courts. But if you guys decide to reread this and try to not agree with TQL, probably the chances you're going to be working with them are very slim. They're just going to put you on a blacklist or they're not going to be giving you loads or make the note in their system. Again, we are already on page 14. Uh, name, sign, uh, title, date, what are we? We are corporation or you are LLC or you partnership. Again, the state, your company incorporated, what is your physical address, MC, DOT, tax ID. This is for the hazmat carriers. If you guys have hazmat certification, you need to fill this out again. And that's it, you are done. This is a proof from uh, FMCSA with uh, MC number. They need to prove to us that they also have active MC. So this MC number is for TQL. So you fill this out, you fill this out, you send it back, send your setup packet with all the information, Make sure you put TQL as a certificate holder and you're done. Anytime you are looking to get the load with TQL, you're already in the system. They're gonna ask you, what is your MC? And they're gonna say, well, you are set up. And if you're not set up, then you're gonna get set up, okay? And you're gonna get that load. Well, let's see if you go to TQL, if you go to TQL, let's see it right here. If you go to TQL nowadays and you guys gonna look for carriers, right? You can click here, start hauling, right? And you can do all of this as link, right? So if you go, go to the next step, I am not a robot, go to the next step. And then you put your MC and you put your MC uh, or your USDOT number, it's gonna tell you if you are set up and, or not. So it's gonna verify your information and then you're gonna go to next step, next step, and next step again. And after you're done, as I did for my carrier yesterday, I, I actually set him up while in, because it is faster than doing the PDF, um, PDF format, you will receive the proof that it was said. Let's just look a uh, really quick look at England Logistics. What do you need to know? Well, to become a carrier, again, you can go to englandlogistics.com, carrier, become a carrier. You're gonna scroll down, but you can choose the option if you want uh, them to pay right away. They have one quick, uh, one day pay, two day uh, pay, seven day pay. If you do not have factory, look at their fees. One day, 6%, two days, 4%, seven days, 1.5%. After all, probably it's easier to have your factoring company. They also have factoring company, but I do prefer RTS over their uh, factoring. This is my personal opinion. And let's see, how to become an uh, England Logistics Carrier. 
first to get started look at this you must commit to moving a load before we are able to fully set you up as a new carrier so next step the ingon logistics capacity manager will send you a link to get set up as a new carrier through mycarrierpackets.com this email links is the only way to get set up online if you want to get set up online okay but if you do want to get set up via pdf before you even have the load you can fill out their pdf format send it to them email to them it will take one to two days but at least you can be preset with england load for example to set up with coyote i believe you have to have 30 days of active mc every broker is going to be different it's not hard to figure it out you can go on their website you can call you can find a broker and you can start working on it so you can go to your um dad look at all this uh, look at all these brokers and you can start contacting them you can start looking for their uh websites and start setting up your new carrier or even if you are working in a company who've been in the business a lot of times you work with the same broker same brokers why because or you are too lazy or you don't think it's important to get set up as long as they have good credit uh, and they are good bigger company you should get set up you should open your opportunities guys you cannot just be working with coyote or tql or gp hunt or just amazon or convoy you do need to have a backup plan b c and d and sometimes you don't even know smaller brokerage they can give you better rate they can treat you better they can be loyal to you so please open your eyes give the new opportunities and start providing a good dispatch service if you are independent dispatchers and if you work for the company make sure the company is not just stuck on two three brokers just because nobody's teaching you or you are too lazy to go and do your job this is number one responsibility for dispatcher get set up as as many brokers as possible making sure that they have a good credit making sure that they have a good reputation why professional dispatchers they can book load like this one two three one two three why because i'm already set up i don't have to wait the 10 15 minutes to get set up i already have access to all those brokers apps and i post my trucks my equipment in the morning and i can just work with that or truck stuff but i do utilize that uh extra free access why not why not this is smart and you come to me to get better right you wanna uh, make sure you have a good result that's why you like my videos you come to my classes and you ask my advice so advice of the day be efficient open your horizon and do your job love you and it's me alex and hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial on how to get set up i would love to ask for your help i would like you guys to subscribe share with your friends i want to grow our community i want to make sure that we are changing trucking industry one person at a time one dispatcher at a time one owner of the time one truck driver at the time one shipper at the time one receiver at the time trucking industry can improve trucking industry can be a better place for everyone and we can educate ourselves we can do it better we can uh, provide better service and we can get rid of that bad rap for dispatchers because dispatchers are awesome we know what we're doing owners of the companies we are hard-working people we do invest a lot of money into this our energy and sometimes yes we are working way harder than we should but as you all know me it's me your sassy girl my name is alexandra but most of you called me sassy and i don't mind because i do this 
with sassy attitude. I love what I am doing and hopefully you can do it as well. Love you all. So let's look at this. We got set up yesterday. We have the proof from the registry monitoring and here's our agreement, TQL agreement, what I did yesterday. So you will receive the proof from TQL and TQL will give you login information in a uh, in few days. So you will receive login information to their load board. And as you all know, the, you can use load boards, you can find, you can find the loads. They have a pretty good, they have pretty good load board and you can find the loads there. You can post your trucks, you can search, you can see all your uh, active loads. Right now I have no active loads with TQL. You can see your history, your trucks, but we're not covering the TQL load board. We were covering how to get set up with the broker. So it's three different ways. One, PDF exchange. Second, link. They're gonna send you link and you're just gonna click or you're gonna find a carrier, go on their website and you will get set up as a carrier. For the new carriers, make sure you try to pre-set up before because it's easier. Sometimes if you really need the load, it takes a while to put you in a system so they will tell you, well, we cannot give you this load first, you will need to get set up. So if you start working with a new carrier, do TQL, do CH Robinson, do the GB Hunt, do the Convoy, do the Coyote. So all of this is set up. You don't really have to have the first load to get set up. And then after three months, six months, your horizon is gonna be open and you are gonna be a pro dispatcher. So how hard is it to get set up with the brokers? Not hard. So just uh, Adobe DC is very simple practice and that's what my students do. That's what we covered in the first cl class. They got the harder way. I sent the PDFs and they have to actually manually do it at least five, 10 setups. But they also have the video how to do it via link and on tomorrow's class, I will be showing them how we're gonna set up a new uh, carrier with, for example, probably we're gonna do uh, England Logistics or C.H. Robinson. So that's why our classes are hands-on and I know for a fact my students will never have questions about how to get set up. And now so do you guys. But if you want me to keep making these videos, I am really in need of your help. I want comments, I want likes, I want people to share this. Because you know what, like in any business, I'm very busy, I'm running trucking company, I'm running a dispatch training center, I am RTS agent, I am insurance agent. So for me to keep this going, I would like to get back some love. And your love is subscribe to my channel, I want you to share, I want you to start doing it better and hopefully share your experience. Find me on Facebook, find me as a dispatch training center, I have a page. Find my group, we have a group where I post all the news, 24 seven uh, truck updates, so find me there. But also comment, because I don't really know guys, do you really need me to do these videos? Yes, they are not maybe high quality because I am not a video maker, right? It's just me, Alex, your sassy dispatch girl, your sassy instructor, and I am just honestly sharing that how it has to be done from my opinion, from my practice, for how I do it. it doesn't mean that it's the best way, but I'm just sharing with you, being in this business, coming without knowledge, how much you can achieve within seven years. I haven't been doing it for 20 years. I haven't been doing it for 25 years. I am a, a woman in this business. It makes it harder as well, believe me. Yes, it's easier for guys to get into trucking. 
And uh, for women, it's a little bit challenging, but as I always tell my students, girls dispatchers, we do better. We do better. We use our charm, we use our sassiness, and we can multitask, right? Because we multitasking at home every day with kids, with making dinner, answering the phone. So I believe in women in trucking. That's why I'm empowering my girls in trucking. I want to make sure they succeed, but I want you to help me out because I want other people to get this. I want them to have some knowledge. If they can afford the trucking classes, if they can afford to come for our trainings, I can understand that. That's why I'm trying to put as uh, some videos and I'm trying to give you hands on practice. Anyway, happy uh, Tuesday. Make sure you share, make sure you subscribe and start practicing. You guys can go and get those PDFs if you they want to practice and you're not in trucking again. Uh, sign up, send me email or just make the comment, connect with me. If you want me to send you the real PDFs of TQL, CH Robinson, England, I don't know, and any broker out there, I have them in the real country and you can practice guys you can practice and you can learn okay thank you again see you soon so now you guys know how to do setup with a broker